This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader who's going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there are no spoilers past the chapter we are covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan of the series, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. Before we get into things today, we want to thank and welcome some new patrons to the Wheel Weaves Patreon team. So thank you so much to Aaron and Brandy Kirkwood for your generosity, and we're super excited to have your support. We also want to recognize Vince Lewick, who upgraded their pledge to become a producer-level patron. So we're super excited about that, because Vince joins the ranks of other producers, Dustin Schluter, Derek Benton, Benjamin, Joe Lott, Kyle Smith, Passion Socks, Multitude, and Mozyme. So thank you so much everybody who contributes on Patreon for your support and your generosity. We really wouldn't be able to do this without you. Welcome to season three. The Dragon Reborn. Yeah, book three. I'm so excited. Yeah, we made it here. We did. And we're still going. Yeah, this is pretty great. And hopefully sometime this season we'll be able to move into our new podcast studio and yeah. actually record from there if our furniture would ever get delivered yeah maybe in another month or two or three we're not really sure <laughs> no but at some point eventually probably yes and we did recently find out some exciting personal news yeah we did that we're expecting a girl yeah surprise yeah it's great yeah and it's kind of funny because i've gotten a lot of people messaging me on the spoiler side of discord saying that I should be naming or like pushing names from later on in the series for girl characters. Yeah. And it's just kind of funny because we're not there yet and we won't be for a long time, but I can't like suggest them because it'll be a long time in the future and then I'll have some explaining to do about how I came up with these names. So Yeah, and if you were to ever suggest a name, <laughs> that in itself would be suspicious. That it would be. Because you are not somebody who is looking things up and suggesting names. And if you I are, have, it's like you've already been across that name like 30 times and like dismissed it. Yeah, so. for the most part, you're either vetoing my names or saying, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, exactly. So That's your role in this. Your yeah. role isn't to bring me names. <laughs> Let's just make that clear. Yeah. And if you ever were to bring me names, I would know they're from Wheel of Time. Probably, yes. Which, you know, I'm not 100% opposed to, but I'm like 90% Maybe opposed 90%, to. 90%, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but with that being said, we are going to be talking about the prologue of The Dragon Reborn. Yeah, and it's called Fortress of the Light. Yes. Now, you hyped this up for me, but you hype everything up that's because i'm a hype man that's You're my like, job oh my god this is like my sixth favorite prologue or something stupid. i did not say that i don't know it was stupid and i was ex- it's probably like fifth or seventh somewhere in there <laughs> you're like i really love this it's so exciting and i went oh my gosh i'm so excited but you have to understand when i say it's exciting that means it's like new information yeah there so, was a lot of information it's some good stuff but i wouldn't say it's exciting It's not as exciting as the first two prologues. Okay, that's fair. I'm going to say that this actually probably could have been just a chapter in the book. It could be, but this is like, it's really good. It's good. It's It's good, good, but what does a prologue entail? You know what I mean? And we we can start a whole separate podcast for like semantics of what a prologue should be. Yeah, because I was expecting it to be separate from the storyline okay you know like the other two prologues were connected okay but separate from the ongoing plot line okay if that sort of makes sense i get that it's a little the other ones were way more cryptic and there's a lot of fun stuff to uncover and decode and learn about and this was just sort of like oh come on we had some fun here's the story continuing so to me it confused me that that's a prologue. That's all. Okay. Yeah. I guess. I was expecting different. Okay, that's fair. Okay. So this is the beginning of book three. It is. And do I need to recap book two? Like I normally, hope not. <laughs> normally this is the part where I give a little bit of a recap from what happened last time, like what's happening with our characters. Yeah. But. I don't feel like we 100% need to. Like as it comes up, 
we can do a where were they last time. Yeah. But I don't think we have to recap and summarize book two. I don't think anyone's just like jumping in on book three. Yeah. Like you probably started at the beginning and you've been following the whole way. Yeah. Well, I do have a couple points in here where Robert Jordan is already recapping. He does. But in all fairness, like the book came out years after the second book. So it's like... You know, there's always that year or two space. Right, and he was always surprised to hear that people reread the book. Exactly. So, yeah. like, he did, he does that intentionally. Okay. So, this prologue is called Fortress of the Light. Whoa, And there whoa. is a... Whoa. Are you just going to skip over my season three first fun fact? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And I had this whole joke planned out where you're going to be like, what's the fun fact? And I was going to say, there is no fun fact. And you were going to be like, what, really? And I was going to say, no, there's really a fun fact. Oh. But that just ruined my joke. But there is a fun fact. That is a good one. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> and you know what's funny? <laughs> is we've just gone straight through. We finished The Great Hunt, and I read the prologue, and now we're just recording like normal. Like, we haven't taken any sort of break, really. Yeah. And we haven't discussed if season three is different from season two. Yeah, that's why my joke came into play, because we haven't talked about it. Yeah, okay. It was going to be great. You were going <laughs> to fall for it. Well, I completely even forgot. You forgot, we, I know, because you never listen to my for fun so facts. Long that we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me get into it then. Okay, okay, do it. So, this one's really fun because we know that Robert Jordan likes to pay homage to Tolkien, and Tolkien had that whole lecture on Beowulf. I know you for sure remember I that. I remember it. The epic uh, saga poem. Yep. And we meet a new character by the name of Ordith. Uh huh. In the prologue. Yeah. And we'll talk about that later, but we yeah. get a new name, Ordith, uh -huh. which means Wormwood. Yes. Now, this is direct homage to Lord of the Rings, where Tolkien created the character Wormtongue. Okay. Who, in turn, got the character from the poem Beowulf. Gotcha. From a character named Unferth. Okay. Yeah. And Unferth me means... I have no idea because it's like Old English and it's very... You know, there's a lot of contested beliefs on what the name actually means. Because okay. when you get far back in Old English, it gets really messy. But it's just really fun that this character name, Wormwood to Wormtongue, is like a direct comparison. And do you think that there is any comparison to J.K. Rowling, who I don't read fantasy, named a character Wormtail? I didn't know she did that. Yeah, that was Peter Who? Pettigrew because he's a rat. Oh. So he has a worm tail. Makes sense. Yeah, so probably a direct correlation there too. Probably. That would make sense. But I had to do a little digging on what wormwood means or what it is. Okay, do you want to keep talking while I pour your shot now or do you want it later? I want it now. I'll keep talking and you go get it. So wormwood is an actual plant and it's actually used in absinthe, which is kind of neat. But separately, the Bible makes reference to Wormwood, where it is a purely symbolic representation of the bitterness that will fill the earth during troubled times. So it's a nice little comparison about, you know, troubled times, bad things, bitterness put into these characters of worm tongue, wormwood, so on and so forth. Worm tail. Worm tail. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, here's your shot. Yeah, thank you. So I have a... Mexican shot glass. Mexican shot glass. I can't read that very well. Yeah, it's from Spencer, who also just went to Mexico right before you weren't allowed to internationally travel. Awesome. And so we get to use it. She sent it to us, yeah. Yeah, it's very colorful, very fun. Yeah, and it's for sure in Spanish, and I don't actually remember exactly where she went. I think Isla Mueres. I don't know if I butchered that at all, but that's what it is. And it's a fancy Day of the Dead skull with a really fancy hat. Yeah, pink flowers and everything. It's nice. very nice. Okay, take your shot. Start us off. I really wish that I could be doing this with you. Maybe Chances in season four. Chances are season four, I will be back to having shots. All right, cheers. Okay. And I take a sip of my water to stay hydrated because that's important and I have heartburn. <laughs> the wormwood in absinthe is the hallucinogen, right? Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. It's just an ingredient in the spirit. I so. think that's what it is. Could be. Because it, absinthe is said to be a hallucinogen. A yeah. hallucinogenic, so. Yeah. Alrighty. Now can we get into book three? Yeah, let's start. Let's do it. Okay, there is some prophecy. Yes, most probable. And it's right before the map. It could be easily missed. It could be. I think. Yeah. You are known for missing things sometimes. Well, I read it. I didn't write <laughs> any notes about it because okay. I just thought, whatever, this doesn't make any sense. Let's skip it. Yeah, we don't really get a lot except for the like reiteration that, he, you know, the dragon's born many times with many faces, many names, and he has a lot of really cool titles. 
Yes. Yeah. Breaker of bonds, forger of chains, maker of futures, unshaper of destiny. Very, very cool. And this is from the third age, whatever that means. Yes. Okay. Could be like this exact third age, maybe in the past. Because it does say it's from like commentaries on the prophecies of the dragon. Right. But we don't know. We haven't had any reference to who the queen of Almoran is. That's so we true. don't exactly know. Okay. And then I also had a separate point about how Rand is the dragon reborn, but the hero's last book kept referring to him as Luz Theron. Yeah. And Beelzebub refers to him as Luz Theron, and Lanfear refers to him as Luz Theron, which yeah. I love I get to say now for you sure. You do. And it's, it's not Selene. It's Lanfear. It's Lanfear. Lanfear. And so the last time the dragon was reborn yeah. was Luz Theron. Yes. Right? Is that Luz correct? Theron like yeah. he hasn't been reborn it under a different name since then. Yes. Right? So Luz Theron Talamon was like 3,000 years ago, roughly. And then now is Randall Thor. And it kind of makes sense that all the Forsaken and everybody's still calling him Luz Theron. Because if you think about it, all those Forsaken, presumably, have been alive the entire time. Right? Locked away, whatever you want to call it. But they've been around. And the first representation they knew of the dragon would be Luz Theron in his current form. So if they never really died, and it's just been a really, really long time, it kind of makes sense that they're going to stick with the Luz Theron name instead of changing to Randall Right, Thor. and they've just been sort of living in the horn like a genie in a bottle. Could be. And they might not even realize... How much time has we don't we don't passed. actually know how that whole <laughs> horn thing works. Yeah, we might get a little bit more information on that at some point in the series. Yeah, I do have a little bit of a prediction about that. But yeah, an easy way to answer it would be like maybe people just refer to them like each other in their last iteration. So, right. So yeah. like Archer Hawkwing, for example, that was the last time he was alive on this plane. Yeah. So he's still Archer Hawkwing. Yeah. In the horn in the genie lamp because yeah. that was his last you know, rebirth. Gotcha. So. Okay. And then maybe when he's reborn again in the future, and then he gets a new name, whatever it might be, maybe then him and the horn changes with time. Okay. But it's still a little the same complicated, yeah. a little confusing, especially because everyone keeps talking about the thousands of times that Unlimited. they have fought. <laughs> the and... forever amount of times. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's yeah. just hard to think about how those thousands of times that they fought together and fought against each other and Baalzaman, yeah. you know, says all this stuff about how we fought for thousands and thousands of times was before 3,000 years ago. Yeah. So e Eternity is a long time. Eternity is so, a long time. Yeah. And we kind of got a little reference to that with Rand when the heroes came out because he was like, I know their faces, but I don't know their names. Right. I, but, and I know like he recognizes them. Yeah, he recognizes the soul. Yeah. So. So the prologue is called Fortress of the Light. And the picture symbol is of the sunburst. Yeah. So it means. White cloaks. Yeah. White cloaks. Children of the light. And fittingly, we get into the perspective of Pedra Nile. Which is really cool. Yeah. This is the first time we've gotten a Pedra Nile perspective, but not the first time we've heard of him. No, no, no. We've heard of him, but we've never actually... I don't know if we've seen him face-to-face -face anywhere, have we? We saw him in a flashback with Jeff from Bornhold. And uh, I pulled up that flashback in case you wanted to know what his orders to Bornhold were last time. Okay. It's kind of important. Yeah? Is it? Of course it is. Is it important right now or important when we get to it later? We can come back to it if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I really I want to get started. I want to okay. get into it. So, Pedro Nile is in his private audience chamber, which is... Super fancy. But it's super fancy, but also not. I want to have a private <laughs> audience chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the gold a floor is fancy, it's but like <laughs> the furniture is not. Yeah. It's like markedly very plain. Right. And then so are they in Amador? Yes. Because I know that the Questioners and the Dome of Truth are in Amador, but I didn't know if... The White Cloaks would also be there. You yeah. know what I mean? So we've kind of gotten a couple references in the last two books to this. But just to clarify, Amadicia is like a, is a nation, but the White Cloaks like hold up in the nation. So there's a separate king of Amadicia, but Amador is where the White Cloaks are, and that's where the Fortress of the Light are, okay. and the Dome of Truth. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah. 
So Child Byer is here, and he is giving Niall the scoop. Yes. So he's telling him everything that happened over in Falma, over with Jeff from Bornhold, over with the Shan Shen, yeah. and the dark friends, and Aes Sedai, and everything. Yeah. So we also get that Pedra Niall has three of those Rand Baalzaman in the sky drawings. He does. And they're all the same, which is really not a good thing because that means it's probably real. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Rand's face is very, very distinct. Yeah. Yeah. Caricature like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is kind of funny that it looks like Byer has gone to Nile first and not to Dane. Yeah. At first, I didn't get that. Yeah. Okay. I actually was interested in how long this has been because okay. in my mind, a prologue doesn't yeah. have to really follow anything it doesn't so at yeah. first when i saw that buyer was here i thought he had already gone to dane and now was going to yeah because that's what the orders we had heard were yeah go was, to my son go to my son and, and then, then go to nile and that's what i thought was happening and, and if you look at the map though that kind of doesn't make a ton of sense because you'd no. have to like crisscross but yeah. this way is nice little swoop, yeah that's so. why i thought it would be like yeah half a year to a year <laughs> later kind of thing but doesn't seem that long though no so we do get a recap here uh, about Luce Theron and Aes Sedai and the breaking of the world 3,000 years ago. And we can sort of skip over that because we are not picking up this series for the first time and starting at book three. Yeah. But okay. like if it's been years that you read it, maybe you want to recap. Maybe you also want to recap. Not, so. But yeah. So Pedra Nile wants to know seriously if this boy has proclaimed himself Dragon Reborn. Yeah, it's an interesting way to phrase it. Yeah, because clearly from this picture, he can tell that Rand is quite young. Yeah, and it's like we've gotten reference to a bunch of other false dragons, but it doesn't seem like any of them are exceptionally old. Like, we haven't gotten reference like, oh, there's an old man, because it's all Not men who... Not old man, yeah. but maybe just like... A little more seasoned? A little more seasoned. Yeah. Yeah, a little less super 20. Yeah, like, like we, yeah. we saw Loghain, and he kind of was like a man... Yeah. in the cage and he seemed like really fierce and we have like little farm boy rand i yeah. mean not he's not a little farm boy but no even in the pictures niall can tell he's tall he's a big guy yeah. he's like yeah so anyways. it's like he's in the sky <laughs> yeah he could be any size yeah but it doesn't matter so buyer talks about how there is civil war between tom and head and arid Domin, and the people declaring for the dragon are just making it worse yeah, and that's cool that there's already people proclaiming thousands Yes, supposedly have declared for Rand already. Yeah, but, but turns yeah. out Winter has rolled in yeah. and settled it sort of for now because nobody is fighting in the cold. And that's cool because that gives us a timeline for how far we are in the book so far. Right, because it was autumn when we were there last. But when the Eye of the World started. Oh, when the Eye like of the Like since World. the beginning of the journey. Because it was spring. Yes. Yeah. So gotcha, it's been like gotcha. six months-ish. If we assume that spring to fall is about six months, and then fall to next spring is six months, it's been about half a year to eight months-ish. Yeah, I would say more than six months. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like we can kind of pinpoint. Yeah, because if we're in winter right yeah. now, that means we're probably a couple months away from spring, and that's where we started the book. Okay. Buyer worries that in the spring, everything will start up even worse. And so then we get that confirmation that Jeff from Bornhold is dead, and Bayer is sure that the Aes Sedai did it. So he's sort of getting questioned by Niall. And Niall is really sort of not believing that the Aes Sedai oaths are true. In yeah. fact, now at this point. Well, it's kind of funny because he seems really skeptical that the Aes Sedai are getting involved. And like he questions them over and over. And I'm just thinking as the leader of the White Cloaks, your entire like mission is that Aes Sedai are evil and they use the power for evil purposes. Yeah. And now that you have your but man saying... But they've never really had actual proof before. And now it's Niall's all like, been what? speculation. So, yeah. And now they're like, wait a minute. Is have this we for real? Been, have we been right? Have oh we my been goodness. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we get a kind of reiteration of what the three oaths are, yeah. but not quite right. No. Which is also important to note because the White Cloaks don't have them perfect. Okay. I yeah. didn't notice that. Yeah. So Bayer goes on to say that the charge of the Shanchen broke after 
the white cloaks fell. Yeah, so he's kind of phrasing it like Bornhold drove the Shanshan back into the sea. Mm-hmm. We know that didn't happen. No, yeah. but I mean, to be fair, standing and watching it, and then also hearing that as soon as the white cloaks all fell into the earth and died, yeah. they turned around and left. Yeah. Like, what else could it be? It makes sense. It it's does just, make sense. Yeah, a little bit, but Byer's just not the best at, you know, relaying information. I think he's relaying information exactly how he's heard it. <laughs> Which is like the problem. Yeah, maybe. He can't think for himself, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they also know very little of these invaders. Yeah, yeah. And they don't really think of them as invaders because they don't want to, and we get into this when the other guy comes in, that they don't believe that they're actually from across the ocean. They just think that they're a bunch of dark friends who gathered to support a false dragon. yeah. But back to this here, because Niall is definitely testing Bayer a bit to see like if his story will change. But Bornhold had always said that Bayer was a good soldier and not a man who can think for himself. Yeah, and we've definitely seen that. Yeah. And then so Bayer is dismissed and has permission to carry word to Dane Bornhold and that he is near Tarvalin still, I guess. That's the last time they heard from him, so... Yeah, and... When Bayer stands to go, he's all pissed off and he's like, we were betrayed by that parent of the two rivers. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because he's got the two things that he needs to like get off his chest one more time. One is that he was actually ordered to like watch leave. and then leave because yeah. he's like doesn't want to be seen as a coward, which kind of makes sense. Like yeah. you don't want to abandon your army because that'll get you they killed real fast. They all died and you didn't. Yeah, yeah, so that's not a good thing. And then the second is the fact that we got that last book yeah. where he was like, oh, it was Perrin. That evil Perrin from the two rivers. That dark friend betrayed yeah. us. And now he like reiterates it to Niall, which is really a bad thing. Like all things considered. Bad things this for is, the two rivers. This is really bad. Yeah. Because now we have like the head, like Niall's the yeah. head, the top guy yeah. in the Children of the Light. Yeah. And now he's putting Perrin on the list. Yeah. Which we don't really know what that means. Yeah. Well, he's like, <laughs> what could this one dark friend have done to piss you off so much? Yeah. Like, yeah, we don't like dark friends, but like, they're all just as bad as each other. What's so bad about this one dark friend? Yeah. Head? And how did you come to the conclusion that he's the one who somehow betrayed you? Yeah. Like, what does that even mean? Yeah. But not no a good thing. No time for that now. No time. Yeah. So... Here we get a recap of all the world wars and yeah. the turmoil that's happening. There is some important stuff in this though, and I yeah. had to had to talk about this a little bit here. Yeah. So we have Kyrian is in Civil War. Yep. Yeah. So here is where I'm gonna link into some predictions I have oh, excellent. for this book. Nice, I love this. Okay. Okay, because it because it kind of wraps up nicely, sort of each place. It does. And so I get to have a prediction about what's gonna happen for each thing. I love it. Yeah. So first off, war in Terrabon and Eridomen. Yeah. Are the Shan Shan coming back? Not this book. Okay. Later on, maybe in the future. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I yeah I definitely don't think that's the last of them. I don't think we get introduced to people like that, to never hear from them. To have them at last, like, uh, one book and then they're gone? Yeah. Okay. No, no, no. Like, there are some, like, people that we have met that I'm like, okay, probably never going to hear from them again, but not... Not this entire culture? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Civil War Especially and Especially because they'll be super pissed off. They'll probably yeah. come back. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Kyrian, what's going on? Okay, so, Kyrian, the king's dead. Yep. Yeah. And Barthanus, Barthanus is, is dead, dead, ripped apart. Right, that was bad. Yep. And then Tom supposedly is still there. <laughs> well, you mark? think you said that you thought Tom was the one who somehow pulled strings and got the, the king, king murdered. dead. Yeah. Yes. Galdrian. I still still believe that. Okay. So is Tom still so there? So Tom has left. Okay, he got out of dodge. Tom has yep. left Kyrian and he for sure is linked to that. And he is going to probably now go try somehow to connect with Rand and find awesome. them again. Okay. I think there's going to be, in this book, another reconnection. Because he was like, I'm out of it, but they keep pulling me back in. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Poor Dina. And he's... Oh, yeah. Poor Dina. They cast Dina. They did. So that's interesting. Really cool. They could have cast her for season two. They're probably going to give Tom like a I longer lo love connection with Dina. Maybe. I assume they're going like, to draw it, that out a little bit. Maybe. That'd be interesting. Yeah. But anyway, so 
Tom is really concerned for Rand and wants to be a part of this journey. Okay. So. But he's going to act like he doesn't want to be a part of it. Sure. Okay. But he's going to find them. Now we've got War Fever and Ilian and Tyr. Right. But they're old enemies, so that's like pretty common. Uh huh. I do think at some point Rand needs to get to Tyr. And I wonder if Moraine still wants Rand to get to Ilian with the horn. Yeah, those are the two connections. Because we do get that. Ilian has called for the Great Hunt for the first time in 400 years. Yes, yeah, like, so we knew that. Like, yeah, but this is like officially yeah, the happened. hunt out. Yeah, and which is hilarious because the horn has already been found. And sounded. And sounded and is now like being brought to the White Tower. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you're too late, guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that maybe Maureen is going to stick to her plan of wanting Rand to bring it to Ilian. Okay. Somehow. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Maybe. and But he also has got to get to Tyr to because get the, the sword, sword that is not a sword. sword. Yeah. But he needs followers. He needs people of the dragon before he can go there. Right. Because so that's something think... that... That's what Loghain was trying to do or something. Yes. Yeah. That's what he was trying to do. Yeah. He named his people the people of the dragon so they could go to Tyr. That's right. And get the sword and that's not a sword. And get the thing. Okay. So... I don't know if that'll happen in this book. It's called The Dragon Reborn. So I do think that there will definitely be more of like a proclamation... Rand will probably step into the role. Step into the role. Yeah. Well, we left with that whole big cliffhanger where Morin was like, what are you going to do? You got to choose. Well, and then it, you know, he chose, he but we don't chose. know what that meant. Yeah. But I think he's choosing a whole separate. Okay. A different path. A an different option path. C. An option C. All right. So that's for sure what's happening over there. Yes. Now we've got false dragons in Falma, which yeah. is Rand, yeah. Saldea, which is Mazrim Taim. Right, and that's the first time we get that name, right? No, we've heard it a bunch of times before. Oh, yeah, <laughs> good, good then. Yeah, yeah. So that's the eighth time we've heard this name. We've heard it before. Don't yeah. worry. Don't worry no, about it. No, we definitely it. have heard that name a couple of times. Okay. But and uh, he's not the one. In my memory. He can channel. If I don't remember it, it's <laughs> new to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what they're saying is that he can channel too. But I said I've been sent there. Yes, but they have not captured him yet. Gotcha. And then we have one unnamed false dragon in tier. Oh, okay. Yeah. In or around tier. So gotcha. That could be good or bad. We don't really know. Okay. Now, we've also got, and this is cool, about the Aeol, there are sightings as far west as Mirandi and Kandor. So Mirandi is on the south side of the map. Kandor is on the north side, and it's about halfway in the middle of Randland. Okay. So the Aiel have come all They're the way. They're really spreading out. Real fast, too. Yeah, because we saw them in Kinslayer's Dagger. Like Which is like mountains. right when they were coming out. Yeah, and then we also saw them at the Steading. Yes, yeah. which was near Kyrian. Yeah. So, again, really close to where the Aiel Waste is, and now they're halfway across Randland. Yeah, they're searching. Yeah, searching for he who comes with the dawn. Right. Which you predicted is also Rand. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. But what's nice is that they're just going to go find him rather than Rand having to go all the way to the Aiel Waste. Okay. Or whatever it's called. What's yeah. It called? Is that what it's called? The Aiel Waste. Yeah. yeah okay. <laughs> the Threefold Land. You had at some point said something about Rand having to go there, but now it seems like they're coming to him, so maybe not. Yeah. Cool. That's going to be exciting. I hope that happens this book. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Now the next one, this is pretty cool. We get news about the Athean Mier, which is Ooh, the sea the folk. the sea folk who are yes. looking for signs. Signs importance of what they didn't say. But I'm sure you remember, we've gotten two references to the sea folk searching for someone so far in the last two books. Yeah, totally. So you might remember in chapter 24 of The Eye of the World... When we first got introduced to Captain Dolman, he's recounting tales to the boys, Rand and Matt, and he says, The only thing the sea folk are concerned with is sailing their ships and searching for their Koromur, their chosen one. Oh. Yeah. I bet it's not Rand. Their Koromur is someone different. It's yeah. not Rand. Can't... Yeah. It, Rand can't be everyone. <laughs> And then in, maybe he's maybe it's Matt. We're not we're not done yet. <laughs> no. And then chapter four in the Great Hunt, when Anaya is talking with Moraine and Leandrin at Foldara, Anaya says a reference to the Sea Folk that they're agitated because they say their chosen one is coming, who is the Koromor. So, gotcha. That's what we've got in the Sea Folk. We also searching. saw a Sea Folk at the Dark Friend prologue. social. Yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, absolutely. So, hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The first sea folk we meet is probably a dark friend. Probably. Oh, probably. not even probably. Like 100%. <laughs> because if anything is confirmed yeah. here, it's 
that another person we met at the dark friend social is in fact is confirmed you're saying that's confirmed okay we gotta yeah, get we gotta there. get there we, we gotta, gotta get, there. get there okay and then the last part here so is there anything else you want to talk about the sea folk you think that is someone else and a different yeah, one yeah matt you think it's matt no i don't know to be fair matt he sounded really the horn anything. of elir yeah he, he is important so like that might be a thing it might be okay i, I don't actually think that <laughs> uh that's a tough one. It's a tough one. It's on the record, though. It's and then, probably rad. It's probably And ran. I'll be, like, mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing is the Ogier have called meetings between the steadings. Interstedding meetings, yes, I wrote. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know they walked there. They didn't take the ways no. to get there real oh, fast. No. So. And I actually had a thought that that stems from the elder at that steading Sofu. Yeah. After seeing the black wind in the ways. Yeah. And then seeing humans use a portal stone yeah i probably bet had something probably to do with it. was like others need to be warned we need to talk about we this. need to talk so, about this yeah so that's pretty good but don't worry because it won't be for another hundred years that anything comes of those ogier meetings <laughs> you know what to be fair they actually did a good job of moving quickly that's only because varin was like yeah we got to, like, to go yeah they're to prod so yeah okay and that's pretty much the end of the recap Okay, so Niall is unsettled thinking about the Aes Sedai who have come out of hiding, supporting the false dragon in Falma, and then we get something about the false dragon in Saldea, and I have a big thing about the name Mazim Taim, Taim, what's Mazrim his name? Mazrim Taim, yep. Yep, that's what I said. And then Niall actually thinks... Well, probably better actually let the Aes Sedai handle that. Yeah, I, which is kind of funny. Even if they're dark friends, like we can't touch that. Let them deal with yeah, it yeah. because I don't want to. <laughs> right. It is kind of interesting that it does seem like there are Aes Sedai who are supporting Rand and Falma. Yeah. We don't really know if that's just Moraine or if that's some like other Aes Sedai too. Who knows? Yeah. So we get from Niall that the battle, the last battle is really coming and all his plans were destroyed. Yeah. And that's all we get for right now. And we get clarification on what he's actually thinking later. Yeah, yeah. So he gets a visitor. Jacob Carradine. Yes, and we've seen him before. We, yes, we did. Like once, again, with Jeff from Bornhold, who really hates the questioners, who was trying to tell him what to do. Right. Yeah. And that's when I was like, oh, there's a questioner here in Almuth Plain. Yes. And there was a questioner who named himself Bors. Yes, that was a questioner. At the Dark Friend Social, and he was a questioner, and his task was to go to Elmuth Plain. Yes, and so cause those, mischief. Those those dots connected. Okay. And they connect even more. Yeah. Do you want to know about that whole reference to Niall? Sure. From what we got from Bornhold? Yeah. Because this was from Bornhold's perspective, but this was when Bornhold was called back from Camelin, and then, if you remember, Eamon Valda followed... Elaine, the Elaine train and the Loghain train. Yeah. To Tar Valen. And then Niall, in this conversation with Jeffrey Bornhold, tells him to take a full legion of the best men to Terabon and silence any tongue that sees and basically kill anyone who you need to and take 2,000. And we know that Bornhold attacked Falma with about, about uh, a thousand. thousand and yeah. left the other thousand spread out so it looked like he was still Yeah, who, there. who didn't like die from those yeah. skirmishes. And then... Niall does talk about the, you know, speaking of Archer Hawkwing and the armies coming back and that the king, who we didn't really know at that point, but that's the king of Amadesia, where the White Cloaks kind of like hunker down, that he does not command the children. So let the king sit in the palace in Amadesia and do what he does, which is nothing. And then there's going to be a separate White Cloak entity in Amador. And we kind of get later on for Niall's plan why this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because he wants everything. Oh, so, yeah. King yeah. of the world. Yeah. Yeah. And he kind of ends that whole conversation with Jeff from Bornhold by saying, there's forces at work beyond what you know. So it yeah. doesn't seem like Niall is a dark friend specifically. No, I don't think that Niall's a dark friend. But he's definitely plotting. He's plotting. Yeah. Because he wants power, but yeah. not in the same dark friend power way. Yes. So... We get that, how do I say it, Keridin? Yeah, Keridin. Is the Inquisitor of the Hand of the Light, which yes. basically just means questioner. Yeah. Right? So, Niall has called this guy here from Terabon, and they go back and forth quite a bit. 
here at the beginning. There's quite a power struggle and we get some insight into the tension between the Children of the Light and the Questioners. Yeah. Especially probably after what Bornhold had relayed through Byer yeah, yeah, yeah. to Niall just now. Yeah. So Keridan says that it was Dark Friends in Falma and Niall says that... It was just a few weeks ago he got a report of Bornhold being a dark friend for marching to Tom and Head against orders. Yeah. So that's interesting that Keridan of the Questioners had written a letter to like rat out Jeff from Bornhold. Oh, yes. Yeah. Calling yeah. him a dark friend of all things. Yeah. So. Well, that's the go-to. Yeah. If you don't like someone, you don't call him an asshole or a dickhead. Which or... is hilarious because we totally know that Jacob Keridan is a, a dark, dark friend. friend. So Takes one to no one. Takes one to no one, yeah. Yeah. Whoever smelled the Delta situation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Keridan says that, well, maybe Bornhold was a dark friend. There's no way to know. He died before he could be questioned. Can't know now. Yeah. And so he knows that in Falma, there were dark friends and I said I in support of a false dragon. Yes. And you know, totally not 100% untrue. Like. Yeah. But not a false dragon. Yeah. And the Shan Shan weren't dark friends. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Some of them, yes. yes. But apparently, dark friends reach into all ranks and stations. Yeah. And then so. this is where it gets thrown into Keridan's face about, well, if you knew they were dark friends, why didn't you, mar why did you try to stop Bornhold from Why didn't you go and help? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, well, there's too many rumors out there to believe. And before I knew, he was already gone. So it's yeah. not my fault. Yeah. And apparently some of the rumors now are saying that they saw Hawkwing himself and half the heroes from the Legends. But that's outrageous. How could that ever possibly happen? Ever. Which is funny. So it's kind of funny how like RJ like portrays information and misinformation. Yeah. Where it's like people get stuff like bang on for what happened. And they're like, how stupid. They totally yeah. disregard it. And they get like the... Like, they, they're giving wrong information, but so confidently because... Yeah, that's, that's what they That's obviously... Believe. Yeah, they yeah. believe it. So, it, the writing's great that way. Well, it's just the real world. It is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, also, don't worry about those Shan Chen because they're just a group of dark friends who gather to support a false dragon. And... No one comes from beyond the ocean. That's impossible. Yeah, I got a, I love Keridan's proof he offers up here. Yeah. Because it's like the worst proof he could possibly ever have. Yeah. Well, it's just probably there's nothing there. Yeah. So That's this is proof. <laughs> this is like a real thing, though, how some people argue their points is by like, it's an argument from like not believing it's a thing and yeah. that it could ever happen. So it must be true or not true. Right. But that's totally not how you can argue things. No, it's not. It's yeah. not based in fact. It's He's like, just... number one, ships try to cross, but barely any, and then they can't make it. So how could they possibly make it across the ocean? Can't happen. So it's not true. Yeah. Yeah. And then second, when we question a bunch of them, which means we torture them to death, they talked about monsters fighting. And what could that be except for Trollocs and Shadow Spawn? Yeah. It has to be. Yeah, especially the rumors of the monsters fighting for the Dark Friends. Like, that has to be Trollocs, because what other monsters... What else could it be? Could it be? You know what, man? Grom aren't monsters. They're not... Sh well, they're monsters, they're but monsters. they're not... Sh well, maybe not to Grom, though, they're not monsters. And maybe not even to the Shanshan, they're not monsters. Well, Trollocs aren't monsters to... Exactly. Fades. So... Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think I just made a point there. Yeah, your point is stupid. Not sure what it is. <laughs> it's not a point. It's a bad point. It's like you're literally doing what you just said people <laughs> shouldn't do to prove their points. And that was my point. Thank you. Terrible. Okay, let's move on. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. So, Keridan says, like, don't worry. I will hunt for this false dragon. I will hunt him down in the streets and I will kill him. Murder yes. him dead. That's the plan. So, this is actually where Niall calls him out and is like, why didn't you go to Falma? And he goes, my task was to bring light to Almuth Plain. Yes. And he goes, no, your task was to seize Almuth Plain. So, and all you had to do was like occupy it. Yeah. So this was his plan, Niall's yes. plan yeah. that has been disrupted. Very much so. And? And to be fair, it's a pretty good plan. So just to kind of outline it, he sends questioners and a bunch of like a legion basically into an already like war stricken country that's like on the brink of collapse and just go fill the space that's that overconfidence yeah I think. well a hundred percent it is right and then he says the nation of all myth would live again and it would be ruled by the children of the light and we wouldn't have to pay lip service to the fool king of amadesia 
Right. It's that king we keep hearing about because this is where they already yeah, yeah. hunker down now. Okay. So Niall threatens to put Carradine forward in front of his own questioners. Yeah. Like he really is starting to scare him. And I think that this is funny because this is another group who do not like to be put through what they do to others. Of course. Why mm-hmm. would a why would a torturer want to be tortured? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. But there's more similarities between the, the white cloaks and the Shanchen. Yeah, exactly. So, and it, it is kind of funny considering what we know of Jacob Carradin being a dark friend. Yeah. And then him being presumably questioned by his own questioners. Yeah, but I also yeah. think it's interesting that Niall says that you know what they do and within days you'll be saying you're a dark friend. Yeah. So it's like they know that they're not actually rooting out dark friends. They're just torturing people into saying what they want to hear. And the issue is you have one of the people who are torturing people who is a dark friend. Yeah, that's an issue. Like, would they actually... It's like a soul dam who's controlling Aes yeah. Sedai who is an Aes Sedai. Well, it's kind of like, what, what is he going to do? He's a channeler. Is right. he going to help, like, dark friends escape? Or is he going to, like, make innocent people confess to things they didn't do? So yes, that it's one. Like that's the one he's going to do because he likes power. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a whole lot of bad. <clears throat> so Niall has some new plan, and he tells Carradin that he is not to kill this false dragon. He's actually to make certain that he does not die. Yeah, and just to kind of, you know, emphasize here, this, what Niall is doing, is literally treason yeah. to the children. Yeah. Because they are supposed to kill everybody who is a channeler. Yeah. And him just saying it should get him killed right now. Yeah, but it doesn't, because his plan is to loose a rabid lion in the streets. Yep. And then once people are all freaking out, then you put the lion down and everyone will thank you and obey you. Yes. And then you just keep giving orders and more orders because obviously people are going to listen to you because you just saved them. Right. And that's kind of was his whole plan is if you filled Almuth Plain with Children of the Light and then they have Amadisia, it's literally like he's going to crunch the entire land between and then Children of the Light basically rule Take it over. the yeah. West Coast. Yeah. yeah. So... He also says that he does not want his lion dead before this time. So it's confirmed here that he wants to use this false dragon, maybe. He wants to like, use Rand. Well, yeah. specifically Rand. But he wants to use him to get more power. And then we get that if this dragon does die, this false dragon, then Carradin will be to blame and be killed. Yes. So basically to protect Niles back, he's threatening him, saying, if Rand does die, you're dead. then you're dead. And if I die, you're also dead. Right. So you better make sure Rand doesn't die. Yeah. And Carradin says he will obey and he has sworn to obey. And yes. these are just more similarities between the Shanchen and the White Cloaks. Yeah. Swearing oaths to obey. Yes. And serve. So Carradin is dismissed and Niall thinks about his plan about uniting humankind behind the banners of the Children of the Light. And he thinks that the last battle is coming, but really it's just a fight against Trollocs and Fades because the Dark One's seal will hold. Yeah, it's kind of like not a terrible like thought process he goes through. Like it's not some big epic final showdown between the Dark One and the Dragon Reborn. He's like, it'll be the Trolloc Wars again. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. a giant, and I'm going to be the one who unites everybody to go fight the Trollocs, kind of like Archer Hawkwing did. Right. Yeah. So, and that's his big thing is he wants the fame and the glory and to be remembered for a hundred generations. Yeah. So, so he thinks he's alone right now, but then he hears the voice of a man behind him and he spins around and we get introduced to a tiny bony man with a beak of a nose. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So well, it's just Fane. It's Fane. Yeah, of course. How do you know that it's Fane? Because who else has a beak of a nose? Exactly, because back in Eye of the World, Chapter 3, yeah, this is how knows. Fane was described. Exactly. So. And Ordeeth. Ordeeth. Mordeth. Ah, close. Uh, close. Uh, He's a crafty one. It's pretty much the it's same. Pretty good. It's good. Yeah. So It's as crafty as Fane would need to be. Yeah. So I like that he actually didn't go with the Shanchen. It is. We get like although, huge confirmation here. Although. Okay. I wanted to see what they were up to. In Shanchen. I thought we were going to get Fane perspectives in Shanchen. That would be so cool. I was kind of looking forward to yeah, that. Yeah, that would be really, but really neat. But he managed to be like, oh man, shit's going down. I'm out. Yeah. And he takes off and he thinks, okay, where should I go now? How about to the already corrupt 
Children of Light. How about that? Yeah. How about how about yeah. it? So it's pretty great. <sighs> like you know, he worked his way up in like zero time. Literally zero time. So Fane, I thought you were gonna not confirm it for me. Oh I yeah, you no, it's a hundred percent. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, good. I'm glad because yeah. I was gonna like I had so <laughs> many argument points. Okay. To be like, because I thought you were gonna fight me on it okay. and try to convince me it wasn't Fane. Oh yeah, well a hundred percent. Like right in the writing, the huge beak of a nose is word for word the exact same description yeah. that they gave us when we first meet Fane. And there's like a hundred other things that we get about Ordeath and Mordeath. And like, there's no way that you I could convince you otherwise. No, I know so. that. But I thought you were going to try. Yeah. <laughs> so turns out about a month before, in the dead of winter, this guy just shows up and somehow manages to talk his way through layers of guards to get to Pedra Nile. Yeah. So that's Fane. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> that's, I, didn't that's even, what he does. I didn't even need a point. It was like, okay, that's Fane. <laughs> And he knew things about the events on Tom and Head, events that no one else knew. Yeah. So Niall thinks he's clever, and this Ordeath helped him come up with his plan. And I just went, of course he did. Of course he did. Yeah. So it's kind of funny, like one thing about me confirming this for you, I don't personally think that this is supposed to be a mystery, a mystery for yeah. who, it, who it is. Like, yeah. I really don't. Well, and especially later on, we get that he, like, fucking hates Rand, and he knows all about the two rivers. Yeah, yeah. And, like, it's yeah. not supposed to be a misdirect, but he can't outright say, this is Padden Fane. Yeah. There's no way to write that in, except to describe him Unless perfectly. he gave his name as Padden Fane. Yes, Like, I'm yeah. wondering why he's given a false name. Yeah, and that's... You know what I mean? Yeah, it's hard to like, say Like, I'm exactly wondering why. what, in his mind, is linked to Fane, other than Rand... Who knows his name? Maybe, if he's trying to stay hidden. Maybe Fane is becoming less Fane and more more death or something new. Yeah, well, this whole working your way up to the top and then whispering in the ear. That's Sounds very more, more death. death. That's, that's not Fane. That's more no, death. No, that's more death. So. Yeah. Okay. So Ordeath slash Fane <laughs> yep. picks up one of these drawings and looks at Rand's face and like grimaces. And Niall is pissed that this guy has come unsummoned. And, like, that's a little presumptuous, just showing up. Through the secret passage. Through the secret passage. Yep. But Niall asks if he thinks it's funny that this false dragon is, like, unleashed on the world. Yeah. And he's like, oh, a false dragon, of course. What else would he be? <laughs> and then he, like, barks a shrill laugh. Yeah. Like yeah. a crazy man. Yeah, and then Niall thinks that he must be at least half mad. Yeah, but he's clever. Yeah. He's clever, he's so clever. keep him. Yeah. So. And Niall is like, oh, uh, do you know him? Yep. And he's like, yep, <laughs> that's Randall Thor from the Two Rivers, and he is a dark friend. The worst kind. The most evil, worst dark friend there ever could be. It's this guy. Yeah. And, and again, this is bad because, again, we get the two rivers oh, being yeah. thrown under the bus. Oh, yeah. And so Niall says, another dark friend from there. And Ordeath goes, oh, yeah. Matt and Perrin, they're evil, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. And again, like triple, quadruply worse. Yeah. Again, names being thrown out. Yeah. And last the two names, rivers. too, right? Last so names, that's like, going to be bad. Real bad. So he says they are isolated, and that makes for an entire dark friend village. They don't even have to hide it from each other. <laughs> it's just like this whole little town of what dark friends? Yeah, all like doing Could dark friends. Could you friend imagine stuff? Sen Bui being? Oh yeah, accused of being a dark friend by a white cloak. Well, that's what it sounds like. It's oh coming to is like that's gonna be hilarious. Oh yeah, it's it's so bad though. But I mean, it's also kind of like how things worked with like you know, taking over other lands. Well, it's yeah. like, oh, that whole village is evil. We have to destroy them. Yep, so yep. it's not good. Yeah. So while they have been talking, Fane has crumpled up this parchment and Niall goes, hey, don't crumple those up. I don't have many of them. <laughs> and he gets pissed off. Yeah. And everything is ripped away but Rand's face. And Oh, good. He, plus, he calls him the dragon and not a false dragon. He does. And Niall corrects him and yes. says oh you mean false dragon and you'll notice what fane or or Deeth keeps calling pedra nile great lord great lord yeah so it's kind great of funny lord of the dark that's what it like yeah, yeah but that's also what he called turak oh great lord and since we're coming yeah. to the end of this whole like fane you know situation here more death situation it's kind of interesting because more death 
way back in Shadow Logoth, his whole thing, or Eridol, his whole thing was worm your way in, get to the top, whisper in the ear, and then destroy the Empire from within. Yeah. And then he went off and he did that in Shanshan with Turek, wormed his way into the top. Yeah. And then we don't really know exactly how bad things got with it because yeah. the Shanshan were driven out, but now he's wormed his way over to another top of a organization in the White Cloaks. Yeah. And he's like totally in the ear of Nile, oh, like a hundred percent. Oh yeah. So what is he going to be whispering to, like maybe collapse the Children of the Light somehow? Yeah. Well, he's definitely the one who's saying, "Don't kill Rand yet." That's the whole. Yeah. Well, it's also because we know that Fane wants to kill Rand himself. Himself. So, yeah, yeah it's yeah. all just like. Yeah. Very neat. Okay, so Nile says, "Perhaps I must make plans for the two rivers." When the snow clears. Ooh, okay. And Fane says, as the great lord wishes. Yep. I went, oh, sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Okay, and then we get a scene change to Keridin leaving Niall's chamber. Yes. And so he heads back to his room and slams the door shut. But then a movement catches his eye and he turns around and it's a fade. Yeah. And I went, aha, I Ooh. knew it. I knew it. I knew it. He's a dark friend. I knew it. Before we get into this, one kind of like little thing I have to point out is the difference between Niles Chambers and Keridin's Chambers. Niles was described as like very plain and simple. Yeah, there was like the whole pure golden sunburst on the floor, but like nothing else was fancy. Because it's Niall, and he's like a very simple guy. And then we have Jacob Carradine, who's got all this like ornate, elaborate, ornate, oh, expensive yeah. stuff because he's a bad guy. Because he's a bad exactly. guy. Exactly. And he's got like a layer. He's got like a layer. Yeah. All bad guys need a layer. Yeah. So anyways, there's a fade. There's a fade. And they're kind of buddies. <laughs> no, they are not buddies. So he's pretty scared. Yep. But he tries to keep it cool. Yeah. And he goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> And the Fane says, I like to... And the Fane. Yeah. <clears throat> and the Fade says, I like to keep watch on those who serve me. And then Keridin says, I serve the... But then he lowers his voice because he realizes he's in the Fortress of Light talking to a Fade. Yeah, in like the middle of everything. And in he's his about chambers. to announce, I serve the great Lord of the Dark, oh. as do you. We and you're both not, serve. You don't say that out loud in the Fortress of the Light. Yeah. You just don't do it. So he, he lowers his voice. Yeah. Don't, don't whispers worry. It. Don't worry. He whispers it. So the Fade's like, whatever, man. Yeah. <laughs> like It's basically the same thing. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> worried about you at all. So turns out Keridin is in trouble as he was not supposed to leave Almuth Plain. And he goes, well, the commander summoned me. Like, I have to obey these orders. And the Fade's like, these commanders' words are dung, and you were commanded to find the human Randall Thor and kill him. Yeah, so this is very interesting. Yeah. That the whole hierarchy thing is like the Fade and the Dark Lord doesn't really care if you're being summoned by the captain commander of the Children of the Light. Yeah. Like, you got your own orders and He's to like, follow. I gotta keep up my ruse. But the, and they're like, yeah. fuck your ruse, yeah, kill man. Ran. Kill Ran, kill him dead. Yeah. Yeah. And so Keridin asks why. He thought the Great Lord just meant to use Rand. Yeah. But the Fade acts quick and like picks him up by his face and crushes his wrist and says, you will kill this human. And if you don't obey, there are other children here who will tell on you. Yeah. So more dark friends in the Children of the Light. I'm surprised. I am surprised too. Very surprised. Takes one to no one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's kind of interesting now. Keridin is getting two completely different sets of orders. One from someone who he's going to die if he doesn't kill Rand. And then and one the other, who's going to kill his family. Yeah. Is that worse? Yeah. I think that's worse. Well, it's like, yeah, because Niall doesn't want Rand to die, but the Fade still wants Rand to die. And we got to get into that too. Yeah. Because with the Fade giving orders that Keridin has to kill Rand. Yeah, we've I wonder this... how many other dark friends have the order to kill Rand. I was going to ask you because yeah. we've gotten that flip flop many times about don't kill Rand, kill Rand, don't kill Rand, kill Rand. Yeah, and are all the dark friends getting the same order at the same time? Is it like I don't know. half get the order, half don't? Yeah. So I don't know. Very confusing. I think that ever since the fight with Baalzaman, Baalzaman, it's pretty clear that Rand is not going to come over to the dark side. So far, yeah. So far. Absolutely. And so the first two books were really heavily 
Star Wars esque come to the dark side. Yeah, yeah. We have cookies. Exactly. Right? But then I think it's becoming quite obvious now that Rand is not going to do that. Yeah. And so if you're not going to come with me and join me, yeah. well, then I have to destroy you. And it's kind of interesting because we're getting these different directions and we've got like independent actors here. We've got the Forsaken. We've got Lanfear. Is Lanfear ever going to want to legit kill Rand? No. Like never. She wants him to be her lover. Her lover. Because she said Ishmael thinks he pulls the strings but I do. Yeah. And then we got that sort of hint that Ishmael is actually also Baalzaman. Yeah. So it's like Baalzaman thinks that he's controlling everything. But Lanfear's pulling strings behind. Yeah. And it's like, which dark friends work for which, like, Forsaken? Does Lanfear have a squad and of And what goons? other Forsaken are free? Yeah. That's the other thing that crossed my mind that we never talked about. Because there's 13. We saw two die in the first book. Yeah. We don't really... Th- you know see or hear about anybody else really not yet no. not yet so that means there's 11 potential on the table 11 nine more yeah nine more yeah nine plus Lanfear and, and Ishmael. Ishmael. Yeah, yeah yeah okay so things escalate quickly because if this keratin doesn't kill rand members of his family are gonna die every month like real fast and then once they run out of family members he's just gonna be brought to shale ghoul and basically wish he was dead yeah that's so crazy the end. Yeah. that you're... And it's every month that Rand's alive from right now. From right now. And I hate every month. to be the bearer of bad news, but there are a lot more books and I think Rand's alive for them. So that doesn't mean very good things for Keridan's family too. No. Like sisters, uncles, it goes through like family trees here. Like yeah. his entire family tree. All his blood. And yeah. you can't 100% necessarily assume that Keridan's entire family tree is a bunch of dark friends. No, too. I would probably assume none of them are. None of them because are. Because he's a questioner yeah. of the Children of the Light. And it's like, if your uncle is a questioner, you're probably not going to dip into the dark side. Yeah. Unless he's one of the dark friends. Uh, it's, it's very confusing. It's very bad. Very convoluted. It's all terrible. But it does kind of, like, getting this confirmation of another dark friend who's in a relatively high station in a presumably, like... I, I'm going to say good in quotations here. Yeah. Good, like, legion of men, the children of the light. They're supposed to be good guys in a way. Well, no. They're they're fighting against the shadow, but they are not good guys by any stretch. But you know what I mean. Like, they're yeah. supposed to be the non-dark friend organization. Yeah. Who's preaching the light and everything like yeah. that. It kind of calls into question everything that we saw, you know, him talking to Bornhold about. And, like, yeah. who else in the children... Yeah. Is like pulling strings. So. Then the Fade throws him just across the room and disappears. And then Keridan's servant comes in and says, forgive me, master. So obviously someone who's also a dark friend. You'd think so, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be called master in the (laughs) questioners. Okay. Well, yeah. You know, like, I think that they're not used in terms like that. I think that's a very dark shadowy term (laughs) his master master yeah okay yeah so he says forgive me master i was buying fruit and then keridan says hurry fetch me pen and paper and ink i must send orders but then he thinks which orders which orders am i sending so which orders do you think he's sending this guy's in trouble yeah he's got to pick a side yeah i think he's gonna pick i think he's already picked his side you which side the dark okay oh yeah yeah he's a dark friend he's yeah, picked yeah. his side and he doesn't want his family to die yeah he's probably going to get rand killed but then have it like be like nothing to do with him or like try to have it look like it has nothing to do with him so maybe he could in some way fight for his life pull it both ways like, yeah pull it both, both ways okay okay so have orchestrate rand being killed or if you think about the easier of the two to eliminate, you're not going to eliminate a fade and the Dark Lord. No, but eliminate you can Pedro eliminate Nile. Pedro Nile. Yeah, but he said even if I die, you'll still die. Yeah, so it's like find the trigger man on that order and then, then you're good. You're in the clear. Yeah, I think that he's going to try to be even like sneakier. Okay. And I think he's going to try to get Rand killed yeah and have it not linked directly to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through the White Cloaks. Okay. Does okay. that make sense? It does, it does. Okay, yeah. so this is sort of where I think that this isn't what a prologue is. <laughs> because it's just like we just read part of the story. And yeah. Now we're going to go on to 
the rest of the story. But now we have corruption in the Fortress of the Light. It's great. Yeah. I love this prologue. Like, it's con- great. Confirmed, confirmed corruption. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think that that'll do it for this prologue. Yeah. And we'll wrap things up here because I've made a lot of predictions. You did, like in the middle of the episode, so that's okay. Yeah. When we did the whole recap on what's happening in the world. Yeah. I do like what you said, and I'm excited to see if it comes true. Yeah. Also, Matt's going to be healed. Oh, yeah. We hey. Got, we got that happening. Going to the tower. Yeah. Yeah. And I want there to be... Like a call for Leandrin's head. Ooh, because we need to see repercussions from that. Yes. Yeah, because yes, she we, probably yes, went back yes, to the White we Tower. Yes, do. Yeah. And we didn't really get confirmation on where Rand and Moraine and Min and Loyal and Perrin. Like, where are they going? What are yeah, they doing? Yeah, we have doing? no clue where they're actually at. They were just five days east of Falma. We know that Rand knows his duty is to find Fane. And I think this whole, in his head, yeah, yeah, thing, okay. right? That's how we left the last book. Yeah. I would say that Fane is putting this whole Two Rivers stuff yeah. into Niall's head because he swore to Rand I'm that gonna... if you didn't find me, I'm going to hurt Two Rivers. Two Rivers. And they didn't find each other, so. For Evans Field, yeah. right? So he waited long enough, I think, months and months and months, and Rand... Didn't come to see him. He actually went and fought Baelzebun in the sky and proclaimed himself dragon. That was not what Fane That was wanted. not what Fane said to do. So now Fane's going to take it out on the two rivers. And then also, he probably thinks that Rand has the dagger, which Maybe. is a part of him, right? That's true. That's so true. he's going to really want that back. Okay. So... Do you think that he's going to attack two rivers in the hopes that it, like, draws Rand home to, like, fight for his hometown? Yeah. And that's how they can kind of like have a showdown. Yeah, and, and I think that we're close enough to the two rivers right now that it could potentially happen. That it might make sense for Rand to go back to the two rivers. In oh, this book. and so, then maybe have like a Tam reunion. Yeah. About like, oh, you're not my dad, but that's okay. Yeah, and sorry, I melted your sword. So here's the hilt. <laughs> here's the sword that I stabbed Baalzamon yeah. with, and now it's a crumpled mess of metal. And I'm kind of the dragon reborn, but it's okay. Yeah, and Rand's or er, and Tam will be like, I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a pretty good idea when I picked you up on that mountainside. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so that's definitely going to happen. This book. I actually would like that to happen it's it's a very good possibility that it will yeah like things are kind of lining up where that could happen it could yeah all right okay let's go yeah let's go do it let's do it let's do this thing yeah book three book three here we go because this is definitely part of the pattern yeah it's part of the pattern Thank you for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Vince Lewick, Dustin Schluter, Derek Benton, Benjamin, Joe Lott, Kyle Smith, Passion Socks, Moltude, and Mozyme. Music by Audionautics.com. If you'd like bonus content, like bonus episodes, outtakes, Q&As, more fun Wheel of Time talk, early access, cool stickers and keychains, and also to support us making great content, visit us at patreon.com slash the wheel weaves podcast. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Twitter at the wheel weaves podcast. We love interacting with our listeners. Plus don't forget to rate, subscribe, and tell a friend about us because referrals really are the best compliment. We'd really love for you to come over and join our discord channel for some spoiler or spoiler-free discussions, you can find the links at our Twitter page as well as on our Patreon page. Thanks again for tuning in because this really is part of the pattern now.